Thank you so very much for staying with Facing the Nation. And you know, I always have a brighter smile when I have this gentleman on our program. He hasn't been here in a while, but it tells me that he still, uh, he's keeping his promise. He did promise the first time he came on Facing the Nation. He promised that he will always be here to give us updates. And again, we really, really appreciate this. I did say we're focusing on the education sector in the second half, specifically our country's highest learning institution. And of course, and we're very proud of that. That is the University of Guyana. It is my pleasure to welcome back to Facing the Nation, Mr. Well, Professor. <laughs> I don't know why I'm trying to reduce his title today, <laughs> but Professor Ive Law Griffith, he is the Vice Chancellor of the University of Guyana. Welcome back, sir. Thank you. Delighted to be here. Always a pleasure to join you. Wonderful. And I take this opportunity, and here's one of the reasons he's back today, giving us those updates. Uh, he is approaching two years. Can you believe it's been two years already uh, since he took that post? And we've seen so many changes. Um, Professor, again, so happy to have you on our mm -hmm. program. What has been what been happening in terms of improvements and so on at UG? And even before you, you, you talk about that, how do you feel two, two years? You're, you know, you've achieved two years. Do you feel as though you've been able, of course, along with your supporting team, that you've been able to take the University of Guyana to a place of improvement and good positive changes? Mm -hmm. Well, I want to begin by thanking you and the viewing audience for the support people have provided over the years. I want to thank the government of Guyana, the many private sector, civic society folks. I even want to thank some of my critics <laughs> who have enabled me to see the value of what we're doing and to see the value of not getting def being deflected mm. from keeping our eyes on the prize. I think uh, I came to the University of Ghana in the context of significant neglect. Mm. Came to the University yeah. of Ghana in the That's context true. of having the obligation to try to address almost everything at the same time. Mm -hmm. We don't have, we didn't have, and we still don't have the luxury of saying, let's fix the facilities and then get the grades. Let's do the salary and then get new degree programs. We've got to, and we've been trying to, with fair measures of success, mm -hmm. addressing the multiple challenges and opportunities that are there. So on the whole, I fear, feel very good mm. that we uh, have accomplished a good deal, that we know that many of the issues and the challenges are not amenable to quick fixes, mm -hmm. but we're comfortable that we have an, uh, an agenda, an approach, what I call Project Renaissance, that is not only inclusive of stakeholders within Guyana, but inclusive of stakeholders outside of Guyana, some of whom are not Guyanese, mm -hmm. not only the diaspora. Some of my critics don't like the diaspora aspect, and I make no apologies for having the embrace of Guyanese who want to give back, but cannot, like I did, move back move to give back. back. Uh, so I feel pretty good. And uh, I'm happy you said that because indeed you you didn't only you weren't only the new kid on the block again. But forgive me for using an overused phrase, but you you weren't only the new kid on the block. But you came with all of these ideas, and there were so many expectations. And even though people okay, we like him, we like to hear what he's talking about. It, it's as though yes, we want all of these ideas that you have. We want to see the changes from them immediately today. And I. I I think as mm -hmm. a people, this is what we've become. Because if I'm to use the government of Guyana, the current administration, of, uh, uh, when this administration took office in 2015, I, I, I would admit that I'm a part of it. And sometimes, you know, you want to see these things happen. Okay, you're new. You have all of these ideas. Well, give it to us now, today. We mm -hmm. want everything in this quick fix. So I'm, I'm happy that you've, you've experienced that. And, you but, know. you know, I, I come not only with good ideas. Mm -hmm. I come with three and a half decades at very many institutions, private and public in the, univers in the universities across the world, mm -hmm. where I'm able to leverage some of those ideas and leverage some of the relationships I've cultivated over the decades. Mm -hmm. Some with non-Guyanese, some with Guyanese. And I'll give you one example of not only of leveraging some of those relationships, but the importance of connecting the diaspora. When I came here in June 2016, mm -hmm. I brought a group of four to five friends mm -hmm. around the Guyanese, all except two Guyanese. I said, we've got to come and figure out how can we help this university. 
spent two and a half days at Marriott. Out of that meeting, we had a number of pledges. We established a vice chancellor's fund for strategic initiatives. Yeah. But people made pledges. One of the pledges from that June 2016 meeting is being honored this year. One of those pledges was, I want to help the University of Guyana get some of its lecturers and graduate students to go to PhDs. So we're having, we're having two Guyanese, one of whom is right now doing his master's, one of whom had promised to start at master's, but we will now go straight to do the PhD in computer science. All expenses paid for by the institution of this Guyanese in the diaspora, who cannot move back, came as part of that group, but wants to give back. And that is only one of several examples of the embrace of a wide ambit. But the expectations of overnight are there. And I have learned enough, being a president of a university, provost of two, dean at one, to know that you've got to temper people's expectations, mm -hmm. but you've also have got to show them enough low-hanging fruit being picked and evidence of the hope that they have, that that hope will be translated into reality. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud of the fact that we've been able to pick a lot of low-hanging fruit and even some high-hanging fruit <laughs> in every I way. I like that. I like mm -hmm. that. Do you feel that? Because, again, there are still little things that come up. Um, some of my colleagues at UG might want to hang me for saying little things. But I, I, I'm very sorry. I, I have to be honest. Compared to the problems that, you know, the university would have had years ago, I, I see some of these things as, as little problems. But there are groups, certain groups that, some small groups that, you know, would make some of these things that I call little problems, big issues at times. Do you, that aside, do you believe that you have got, you've been able to, because you talked about the high hanging fruit and mm -hmm. the, the low hanging fruit, do you believe that the students, after two years, they would have seen or understand your vision for University of Guyana and you've been able to bring some sort of satisfaction to mm -hmm. them? Absolutely, yes, and I'll give you a couple of examples. Mm -hmm. But a couple of examples in the context of, in any society, in any environment, you're always going to have people who have grouses, mm. especially when some of those grouses are long-standing grouses they're not, and are not amenable to quick resolution. A couple of weeks ago, I was at uh, an event, a final ceremony of a class project. It was a social work class. It was Lemaha, Lemaha Gardens. And the student who was introducing me said, this vice chancellor He's been here less than two years. He's done all, all these great things, mm -hmm. but some of my classmates are still criticizing. They're saying, mm -hmm. why did you have to make GWLT so cold? <laughs> so I said to them, you, it was hot all the time. Just bring a sweater. Exactly. <laughs> You're going to have people who, even the context of the solution, they're going to have grouses. Mm -hmm. But I would say, A, ask the average student whether or not they have seen demonstrable improvement. Because I certainly, with my team, have enabled improvement. You can check off better Wi-Fi. You can check off an air conditioning at GWLT in small lecture theater. You can check off air conditioning in the SEBI building. You can check off improved services at the Plaisance Dennis Irving Hall. You can check off new degree programs. There are many things which are demonstrable, tangible improvements, benefiting students and staff. Now, that is not to under underestimate problems that still exist. Mm -hmm. But it also is to suggest, and I've said this several times on campus, we are part of the solutions. And so if we keep stealing the stuff that is bought, we're not going to make much headway. If we keep defacing the facilities, if we throw garbage around the place when they are garbage containers. Yes, if we steal the garbage containers that we buy, if we steal the fans that we buy. Exactly. We don't get to complain right. about the discomfort. So what I'm asking students and staff to do is to be part of the ownership of the solution. Mm -hmm. Some of it has to do with how do we use the facilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Less than a month after we put in new bathrooms in the GWLT, some of the fixtures were gone. Uh, so Yes, I would say there is demonstrable evidence of improvement. 
And I am delighted that the improvement in itself, the recognition of the improvement, has meant that the outburst of protests has been muted. I'll tell you something that I saw quite interesting earlier this week. I was on the way to Brazil. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. And you probably know I'm active on Facebook. And I'm looking at some comments from students mm -hmm. in regards to grades. Oh. Celebrating the fact that less than a month after the exam, they have grades and asking from your college, do you have your grades in yet? No. Tell me. This is a student saying, boy, isn't it good to have mm -hmm. our grades? But recognizing that we still have not resolved that problem, which is a decades old mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you that I have made it a personal mission, made it known on campus that we are going to solve that great submission problem this year. Okay. We are not going to do ourselves any justice by having any opportunity to procrastinate, get the grades in. Okay, and, and indeed, I've, I've seen the, there, there, yes, there still works to be done because, in all fairness, you know there are areas of positives and negatives regarding grades because earlier I was speaking to a fellow colleague of mm -hmm. the University of Ghana and he was saying to me that, you know, he, he's started to get grades. I, I, on the other hand, my batch, we haven't gotten ours yet, but we understand that there are teething problems. And mm -hmm. so, Professor, what I'd like to ask you now is about your relationship with the University of Ghana Student Society because mm -hmm. a few months ago, uh, when there were some grouses again, um, increase in fees, I had mm -hmm. the, the president here and I, he was quite fair in what was happening. but. I haven't spoken to you since then, but I'd like now for you to tell me what is your relationship like with the, the, the student society? Is this a, a, a cordial one, an appro approachable one? Let's talk about what's happening. One of the first things I did when I came here is I reached out to both the unions mm -hmm. and the UGSS. Okay. I made an opportunity for us to meet regularly. I said my approach is inclusive. Okay. If you've got an issue, come let's talk about it. It's not going to be helpful to go into the media, social and media, and keep blasting. That has been embraced to some extent, and there was a fall off. And I was telling uh, one colleague from the Ministry of Social Protection, my door is still open. But people who have an, an history of being antagonistic, mm, can't get rid of it's completely. difficult for them to live down that pedestal. Mm. But you ask the students, present student body, leadership, previous student body leadership. From my vantage point, there is cordial. I don't expect there to be unanimity in everything. I expect some of the issues that I'm going to put on the agenda and pursue are going to have resistance. resistance you know, yeah. one of those issues is money. Anytime you talk about tuition yeah. or fees, people are going to get up. But you've got to understand that there needs to be the conversation in inclusive. And I, I still remind people who tend to want to forget the, f the tuition increases that will be coming into their third and final year this coming academic year were not what I wanted. I was going for higher percentages. Oh. It is a group that I set up of the student leaders and the bursar and the registrar. They came back with a recommendation. I said, okay, we'll take the recommendation. So I don't impose. We have a conversation. We may not have unanimity, but we'll take a vote and we'll move on. Uh, but I think overall with the UGSS, I'm the one who said when I got here in 2016, we need to have a student complex. No, there is no place adequately for the students, the clubs to act uh, you know, mm -hmm. do the social intercourse. Okay. So we started working on that. We should be ready by August of this year. I invite you to the ribbon, ribbon cutting. Okay. I think, and you can ask the student government leadership, I think we have a wonderful cordial relationship. All right, Professor, this may seem, seem to some people frivolous because it, it caused, and I'm happy that you did say that you're active on social media, uh, it caused some uproar. I don't know what is the position now, but I'm, I'm speaking from a place of then. Uh, some months ago, it had caused some uproar where we saw a sign or two um, asking students to start paying for parking. I don't know how much of that you could talk about at this point and, and, and what really happened there because a whole lot of people, and I must admit myself, felt that was a bit unfair, especially for students. Sometimes there are students with four hour mm -hmm. classes and so on. There's a broader context in which that mm -hmm. unfortunate one sign was one. posted. Okay. The broader context is we have a massive parking problem at the university. I don't know if you know, when this university was built in 1970 at Turkey, and it was built for 2,700 students. There were over 7,000 students. Mm 
and that canvas. So we've been managing, practicing what I call the science of muddling through and parking. And the security effort as part of controlling, managing that, started to put up signs. They put up one sign. Okay. The sign was not about payment. The sign was about if you don't remove, you will be relocked, locked, and then you'll have to pay, pay to get it. When I learned of it, and it was brought to my attention by the UGSS president, mm -hmm. I called the security guard, head of security, said, and we got to take it down and have a process that has that a confirmation is. information about it. But don't use that as a, as a unilateral. Good intention. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, you know, people take mountains and try to make mountains out of molehills. Yes. That was one, one, one incident. But it also reflects the larger proclivity to raise angst about anything that has to do with money. Mm -hmm. but yeah, because it got people riled up, and it mm -hmm. me. I was like, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, I even had a colleague say, but no, like, you always have Professor Griffith on you. Ask him mm -hmm. when. And it really and truly got a whole lot of people angry. But it was also a reflection of a broader sensitivity. Nobody wants to pay for anything. That even though, too. even yes. though everybody realizes that is an issue to be resolved. And so I'll tell you what I said at an event in April. We, and I've said it to the union, to the UGSS leadership, our university is going to have to solve the problem of parking by having stacked parking, parking garages. Wow. And we are not going to be able to do that for free. Indeed. It will require a public-private partnership to build the garage and to manage it. And so I anticipate having sometime in the next academic year a conversation about, about how we're going to resolve that problem. Mm -hmm. But it is also a recognition that Nobody wants to pay tuition increase. Nobody wants to pay admin fees. Nobody. But Indeed. how can you get these services if you don't? If you don't? Mm -hmm. The new facility we have, we have a, an extension of agriculture and faculty and forestry this year. Mm -hmm. You'll be having the new student complex open. The math and science building is coming along the pike. All those will mean increased expenditure for utilities, for security. How are we going to pay for all these new things if we don't have the income generated? Indeed, indeed, Professor. Our time is quickly running now, but I'd, I want to talk. I'd like to talk about your trip to Brazil. Mm -hmm. Is it? Well, it, it was a wonderfully short but rewarding trip. You know that this year is the 50th anniversary of diplomatic relations between Brazil and Guyana. Again, yes, yes. And so, Ambassador of Guyana in Brazil, who incidentally is a graduate of a university, and as an aside, it was wonderful to see he hosted a very nice lunch for me in Brasilia, mm -hmm. all the senior Guyanese staff from that embassy are University of Guyana graduates, including the ambassador. Uh, many of them did international relations too, although ambassador did uh, languages. Mm -hmm. But it was an opportunity to, I gave a seminar in Boa Vista, the university there. I gave a seminar in Brasilia, mm -hmm. and had meetings with Ministry of Foreign Affairs, their agricultural research enterprise, and it was a wonderful way of meeting Guyanese living in Brazil. One gentleman had been living here for 42 years, still hasn't lost his Guyanese accent. Mm, in, <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Uh, <laughs> yes, but it augurs well for the future of relations we're developing with universities in Brazil. In week after next, we'll be hosting a con consultation on languages. We've got to expand and solidify the languages that we offer. Mm -hmm. uh, not only are the SEBI students going to be required to do a language other than English, but we need to do better in Portuguese, better in French, wow. better in Spanish. We need to introduce Dutch. So we'll be bringing together a number of folks, including one from Brazil, to talk about how might we partner. And some of the people coming are coming, Guyanese from the diaspora, who said, how can I help? help. Mm -hmm. uh, one coming from Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, to be particular, mm -hmm. to be particular. One from New York. Um, person from Brazil is Brazilian, not. Uh, but that visit it was 40 hours hectic. I got delayed in Latem yesterday, three and a half hours. But it was rewarding and mm -hmm. very good to see our cementing relations with Brazil. Okay, and I, I well, I trust the, the delay in Latem that you took time to enjoy what we were talking about earlier with my, my earlier guest, the environs and so mm -hmm. on. So I trust that you took advantage. You know, one of, of the things I've and uh, I've I've been encouraging people now that now that I'm back in Guyana after 35 and a half years mm -hmm. away, 
I'm making a desperate effort to really love and beauty, see the beauty of this country. All of which is not along the coast. And so I was even saying to my wife, who is not Guyanese, she has seen more of Guyana than many Guyanese, having gone to Kaicho, Arawai, Arrow Point, Rupununi. Mm -hmm. uh, but I I'm learning the beauty of our nation, and I encourage as many of our folks who can do so to do so. Fabulous. Professor Griffith, is, uh, it's always a pleasure to have you here. I don't know if you've missed anything. I have, but you, you we'll have, have, we'll have all opportunities. <laughs> we'll have all opportunities in the future. Yeah, and I, I know you're, you're back. But um, quickly, though, just in a minute or so, as you, uh, because what will be happening is that you'll be completing two years. Mm -hmm. As you approach that, I mean, if you can just give a, a, a quick minute of generally what, not only what we, not only as students, but as a people, can expect from you in terms of the works and the contribution to our uh, our nations. And again, we're very proud of this, our nation's, nation's highest learning institution. W what are some of the things that we can expect and what do you expect to see in terms of betterment as you uh, close off your second year and uh, mm -hmm. enter into the third year? One of the things that we're working on is preparation for first soil. As a matter of fact, the uh, week after next, I'm hosting the president of the University of Trinidad and Tobago, with mm -hmm. whom I signed an agreement early this year. Mm -hmm. He'll be giving a lecture on the 21st at Duke Lodge. Mm -hmm. he, he and two technical advisors to the vice chancellor, one from UTT, one from UE. And that visit and those conversations are part of our preparation for a new department of petroleum engineering. You will find an announcement soon about a name change from Faculty of Technology to Faculty of Engineering and Technology. Ah. And those are part of some of the preparations we're doing. We're going to be offering new diploma in conjunction with UTT for next year. Mm -hmm. So I really would like to have the investment and support by Guyanese, not only the government, right. but like civic and private, and the oil industry in helping us to get there. But mindful that we don't want to put all our eggs in the oily basket. Mm, like We've been basket. pursuing creating an institute for food and nutrition security. Uh, it's co-headed. The, the team is co-led by a Guyanese in the diaspora who spent her sabbatical with us last year, mm -hmm. and a Vincentian based in Barbados. I'm, I'm intent on having the launch of that Institute on World Food Day this year, which is October 16. October 16 yeah. So we'll come back and talk you, about that. You see, every time Professor Griffith comes, there is something else that's happening where he promises to be back. And again, I really appreciate the fact that he lives up to do. And viewers, mind you, I must tell you, it's not a case where I go seeking him out. So he is a man of his word. His his <laughs> his team seeks me out, and you know, and and we accommodate them. And we really appreciate this, Professor Griffith. Congratulations on two years. Uh, I know people like me who are open-minded and so on, and there are so many of us. Um, we're looking forward to see what other, I like to call it magic, you can bring to <laughs> the University of Well, Canada. one you'll have in December is the first UG Bowtie Ball. Ah, I trust that I'll get an invitation. There'll be that. gowns and bow ties and corsages for ladies and, and scarves. Oh. Viewers, I can see my gum. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, Professor Griffith, thank you so very much for being here. Delighted to be here. All right. Thank Viewers, you. Viewers, unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there for today, our entire program. Thank you very much to Walton Ryan and Arita Ford for coming and talking about what's happening in terms of the environment and our move toward banning of single-use plastics. Thank you very much to Professor Ive Law Griffith for sharing with us. Remember, uh, next week, he will complete two years as uh, Vice Chancellor at the University of Guyana. And we have seen the changes and they, they uh, and this is not to knock people who have gone before before him everyone comes in there they try their best but you know everyone also has a different strategy some strategies work some doesn't and we, we like to think that professor Griffith's strategies are certainly working but you'll hear more from him um, way before and, and many more times before the end of 2018 those of you who've missed both conversations um, the, if not today, because uh, we're trying to work on some, some technical things, uh, if not today, by Monday, you will see both conversations loaded to uh, YouTube channel and also uh, my Facebook page. This has been Facing the Nation. I am Malika Ramsey. Thank you so very much for joining us. Be good, Guyanese citizens. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Thanks for watching. <laughs>